Hi there, Laura Wilson from Gold Star Work here. Welcome to day eight of Building a Daily Art Habit. Okay, so today I'm going to carry on doing the background for this poppy picture. And I'm going to be putting in some grass and the background flowers for this one. Now I have done a tutorial on how to do the actual detailed flowers for the foreground before just um, it was the last video I did before I started the series but I hadn't shown you how I did all the background of that so I thought you might be interested if you've watched that other video to see how the background flowers is actually formed so that's what I'm going to be doing today and um, it's another nice quick easy method and just a part you can just get the paint on the canvas and enjoy some painting without having to think too hard and, and know that it will lead into something interesting afterwards. Now this is the way I had the canvas up when I was doing the background but as I'm looking at it I'm just going to turn it around a bit and have a look and see which way up I think I actually want to have the canvas. But I think I will still do it this way because there are a lot more darker colours down here than up here. So I want the darker area to be at the bottom and not the top. So I think I will keep it this way. But sometimes you do need to turn things around and have a look at it in a different way. So I'm just using an angled brush. It's a half inch angle brush here and I've got some light green and I've just used um, the colors that I used in the background and I've mixed the green with a little bit of the red to tone it down a bit and make it a more um, kind of olivey color and I've added to my palette some white and some cadmium yellow medium and I'll be mixing greens with that with um, ultramarine blue. So I've got my, my two reds and my two greens that I had earlier yesterday and I've added those other colours. So the angle brush makes it really easy to make those kind of wispy grassy kind of shapes. And I'm going to be doing the grass a bit higher on this side for my composition. And a bit shorter on this side. And I'm varying my strokes, doing thick and thin and short and long to mimic that kind of grass look. But I'm also angling them in on this side and angling them in on this side just to draw your eye more into the painting. Now if you watched my video yesterday, you would have heard me say that I didn't have a great day yesterday. And that um, I'd had issues to deal with and, and I had more issues to deal with this morning and ringing hospitals and getting information and getting people to pass on information to the right people and it's, it has been quite a mission this morning and so it's really nice to get into the studio and do some painting but um, other times when I haven't been painting over the last few weeks and we've had issues to deal with it's very easy to kind of dwell on them and, and get yourself all emotionally upset and things and so when I was waking up in the middle of the night last night instead of thinking about the problems that are going on I actually woke up and I was thinking about my art and thinking about what I wanted to do next and um, how I was going to approach the next few days with this painting series that I'm doing and I actually woke up feeling 
quite energised and couldn't wait to get started instead of waking up feeling depressed and anxious. So definitely um, the art is, is helping me with that. So if you have a love of art and your life's a bit of a stressful mess, then don't stop painting. Keep going. And that leads me into the YouTube video I watched this morning while I was riding my exercycle, which was called Artist Block or Painting Burnout and How to Deal with It. And that was by Stefan Buman. Now, before I talk about that, I'm just going to dry this off so I can do the next layer because I don't want to smudge up what I've already done. So I've, I've dried that off. I think I might like to take some of these um, grasses higher, but I want it to look like it's more in the background than these darker ones in the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this darker colour that I used and I'm going to push it a bit more blue and add some water in it and just make it a bit higher. Because you can already see how this background here looks like it's further back than what I've done in the front. And that's what I'm trying to do, build those layers of dimension. So, as I was saying earlier, I was watching a YouTube video by Stefan Buman talking about artist block. And um, he was saying you know, how artist block is a real thing and it's how you deal with it that's important. So artist block can be caused by stress and by exhaustion. And some of the things that can that can cause it. So if you're in a really stressful um, kind of situation, it can make you feel like you don't want to paint. And he was sort of in, in exhaustion as well, same thing. Um, he was giving the example of if you're booked in for an art show so you're painting and painting like mad trying to get all the painting done and you get up to the show and the show's finished and then there's a lull because you don't have to do anything for a little while and so there's a kind of a break before you get going again and one of the things he was saying was to get over that instead of having a show and then stopping you book another show so you book show after show you have a continuous lot of shows coming up and um, that way when you're you've finished the other show when you finish getting ready for the other show you're and, and the show actually comes up, you're actually halfway through getting ready for the next show already. So you don't get that lull. I'm just putting in some very um, kind of watery red mixed flowers for the, give it the flowers a bit of shape and, and they're, they're the background kind of ones. So you've got your, your initial background ones that are all blurry and indistinct and just a kind of blobby colour. And then you've got your next ones that are a bit more distinct but still blurry and in the black background they're not haven't got any detail to them and that's just what I'm doing now yeah so um that was interesting to me because I have discovered within myself as I finish one project there's often a lull in the past where I've had trouble getting going painting again because I haven't had an idea of what I'm actually going to do next. And the way I've got over that is partly because I now have a studio that I can paint in, so I've, I've got more room, is 
I have more than one project going at a time because you may have wondered with me pulling out these paintings that I've half finished and not actually done any more on for a bit, why I have so many half finished paintings. It's not because I procrastinate a lot and just start things and never finish them. I discovered within myself that it was a good idea to have more than one painting on the go at a time. So if I get to the point where I've, I've come across a problem with a painting and I can't figure out how to solve it and I need to have a break from that, instead of stopping painting, I'll go on to the next painting and, and do some on there and then the solution will come to me for the painting I was doing earlier and I can go back to that. And that means I don't have lots of stops and starts in my painting. I can just carry on. And then when I've finished a painting, I'm halfway through doing another one. And so I don't lose that momentum and that enthusiasm to carry on. So I've just mixed some white with the ultramarine blue. And I'm just going to put in a few of the kind of wildflowers that are coming up in the field with the poppies. And I'm not going to be um, really fussy about it. It's just... A, a suggestion of of the colour in the the shapes that would be going on. And I'm still using that same angle brush that I started with. Yeah, so so I um do do more than one painting at a time normally when I'm in the midst of my painting. So I don't get that lull and I don't get that time where I'm not actually painting. So what I find is a lot of paintings take a lot of mental preparation before you even get pencil down on paper to start planning it and things. I often think about things for a few weeks and ideas on how I want to do them before I even start. And then there's all the um, preparation in terms of doing the pencil sketches and the colour sketches and things, depending on what I'm painting, some of them can, can take a while to plan out. And so if I haven't already started that before I've finished my last painting, it can be several weeks before I start painting again. And in terms of productivity, that's not good. And I also found that it was very easy not to start again you'd fill your time up with, with other things while you were thinking and then it would be like, oh, I'm too busy to paint or I'm actually busy doing something else at the moment. So that was a, that's a really good way for me to, to stop that artist's block where you just stop painting for a bit and not sure what to do next. Just put a little bit more ultramarine on my brush and I'm just putting in a few little darker patches. And now I'm going to flick a bit of yellow around. So I'm using the, the cadmium yellow medium and I'm going to use a, um, a liner brush or a script brush. And it doesn't have to be tons. And as I said, it's not any details or anything. It's just a suggestion that there's something in the background going on apart from the poppies. And I'll just do a little bit of splattering there as well. Adding some, some texture and interest in the background there. So I'm going to add a few more 
of these watery type flowers on top of that, but I'm going to use a slightly brighter colour, but still have plenty of water in the mix so it's not too bright. Let's see what that colour looks like. And you can still see what's going on underneath through the red because it's quite a transparent red. And what you also haven't seen me doing, but what I am doing quite frequently, is when I'm doing backgrounds, your water gets really messy. Well, mine does, it gets really dirty. And so I'm taking the time to change my water on a regular basis because I don't want to be muddying up my paint with dirty water. So what um, Stefan Buman was saying today was that the worst thing you can do for a writer's block or painting burnout is to stop painting altogether and have a really, really long break. And this is what has happened to me before is um, I ended up stopping painting for 10 years and doing other creative things, but I wasn't actually painting. And he says that's one of the worst things you can do because it's really hard to get started again. You need to just work th through it and keep painting. He says you can have, like, say if you're, if you're exhausted and stressed out and you know, have a week or two break, but don't just have a break from painting. Have a break from everything to recharge your batteries and get going again. Yeah, so I'm going to go over with a bit more of that green, the dark greens. Just suggesting the grass again. When I'm doing the angle brush, I've got the pointy part going down. So as I lift the brush up, I get a nice little point on my grass. You can, you can't, it's, it doesn't feel right doing it the other way anyway, so I think you'd naturally just do it that way. Now the other thing that um, he was talking about on YouTube this morning was that you know sometimes you just don't feel like going to paint. You know you're not exhausted, you're not really stressed, you're just kind of blah, and and you can't get any enthusiasm for going to paint. And the thought of going back to painting just just doesn't excite you. So then when that happens, it's usually, he, he's saying, it's usually because you're bored with what you're doing. It's when you need to try something different. So, he's, so there's one of the things I always say, learning new things always excites me with painting. If I've got some new techniques or a new subject or, you know, I can experiment a bit. It always gets me excited about what I'm going to paint. So he's saying, you know, try something new. If you usually do small canvases, get out a big canvas and do a big canvas. If you um, usually paint sitting down, try standing up. Try a completely different subject from what you normally do. And just try something new. And that can excite you and, and stimulate you to do something else and get you going. And you never know, you might discover something amazing about your painting skills. And you might not, you might just get your enthusiasm back for getting back into the painting. Now what, what you're bored with is doing that same routine day after day, doing the same type of painting. So you need to switch it up and change it around. Yeah, so I've got a some of the green that I used up here, this bright set green. So I'm getting kind of brighter and lighter as I build up the layers, but still not 
really um, thick paint or anything. The paint's still reasonably thin because I don't want the colour to stand out too much at this stage. So yeah, so he, he was saying, well, sometimes you just can't be, and you can't find anything to inspire you. So when that happens, he, he says, should remind yourself what's so special about being an artist. You have to evaluate how special it is to be an artist and what it is to be an artist. And he was saying, it's being an artist is so special that they even build museums for it. That they don't build museums for accountants and things. So to be able to create paintings, beautiful paintings, and I think it, it's, a, it's a special thing. And remind yourself how special it is. And if you can't be inspired by something, maybe you're not being true to yourself in the work that you're doing. And if you're painting something that is meaningful to you, then it's going to be a lot more inspiring. Paint stuff that means something to you, the stuff that is important to you, that's around you, to help give your painting meanings, meaning. And that painting is, or art, is a way of communicating and sharing with others how you're feeling in that you should be sharing your work with others. And that's, that's true because if you're not sharing your work with anybody, it can be hard to stay motivated to do the paintings because you're building up quite a stock of paintings if you've been painting for any time. And it's like, well, well what am I going to do with all these paintings? And what am I trying to say with these paintings? So he, one of the things he was talking about is, um, oh, should I just find the quote that I wrote down? Yeah, to be in touch with the legacy you are creating right now, what... What do you want to show your grandkids that you're trying to say in your paintings and things? And so, so that's finding meaningful things to, to paint and sharing them with, with people. And I think that's one of the reasons why I've said to you that, to me, part of me being able to call myself an artist is to actually show my works and sell my works. Because... If I'm just painting for me and I'm not showing anyone, it's sort of, well, I'm trying to communicate through my art and if I'm not actually communicating it with it to, if I'm not actually communicating that art to anyone by sharing it, then why am I doing it? And if, if, if someone wants to buy my work, they like it enough to to buy and spend their hard-earned money on and that validates what you're doing as well. So it's not just about making the money off the art, it's that acknowledgement from others that they value what you're doing as well. And that's all really important part of the art process, I think. So that, that resonated with me too, just you know, that this is why I want to share and sell my art with other people because it gives me enthusiasm to do more art to carry on. So that was all very insightful and interesting and I hope some of that 
will help you as well if you're having trouble with artist's block or burnout or you have had in the past and wonder how you can stop it happening again because I do not want to have another 10 year break from painting and so now I know I need to carry on painting don't fill my time up with other things do the thing that I love which is painting and even if it's just if you can't get any enthusiasm for anything else just get your favorite colors out and paint an egg or you know just play with the color get the paint on to the canvas and have fun with it that's the important part yeah, so hopefully you found some things in all the my waffling that was useful and you can always go and listen to um, Stefan Buman's talk on YouTube for yourself and see what he had to say because I thought it was quite inspiring. And I've, um, I've finished the background now. So as you can see, it's got lots of layers and lots of different things going on and it just adds a bit of depth and, and interest. And so what I would do next is I would compose how I want my main flowers to go and I would paint them in white and then go ahead and build up all the detail. So this is what I've done on this one, the same kind of method. And then I've done the flowers in white and then gone over in the color and build up all the little details and things. And I have, as I said before, this is the painting that I've actually done the YouTube video on, on how to do these flowers in detail. And normally if I wasn't filming, I would just carry on with painting this one here and doing the flowers and things. But because I am filming and you've ju I've just done a video on doing poppy flowers, I um, thought you probably wouldn't want to see another one of those because that's quite detailed work and it will take several days to do those flowers and then do the bumblebees that I want to do on it. So um, tomorrow we're going to go ahead and do something else just because um, I don't want to bore you with painting the same things over and over in my videos. So um, I will get back to this one later, which is fine because then I've got a project to go on with when I've finished doing my 30 days. There will be a project already on the way and I won't have to think about it. I can just go ahead and do it. So I hope you got your paints out today and practice building your daily art habit. And happy painting everyone and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.